<laughs> it says it right on the front there. I bought me an IBM slash Lenovo X3650 Model 5 for £160. Um, it is fantastic. We have a front VGA port there. DVD drive surprisingly, two USB 2s and a USB 3. We've got the uh, new LCD that are, uh, you commonly see on the X3850 X6s. And we've got two of them there, the IBM one and the Lenovo one. Um, but uh, yeah, sadly this doesn't come with all of the drive back cleans. As you can see, absolutely nothing back there. Um, so we only have eight drive back planes, or eight drive bays rather, uh, which is fine though. Um, and I have also 3D printed off two caddies for our drives. Um, it only has one in at the minute in this slot here, which is going to be for the operating system. Um, I've just finished doing some firmware updates on them. I haven't put all of them on yet. There's another IMM one uh, to do for the management, but I've just got to see what IP address this comes back with. But yeah, pretty nice server. The reason why I'm doing it is uh, this big 24 bay array here. It's an IBM Storewise V7000. I don't think it has any drives in it at the minute. No, it does not. Um, this essentially, you can put 24 drives in and it connects over the uh, an external SAS interface, which is very, very nice. Um, I do have another one over here, as we can see there. 24 lovely bays. These each have uh, 450 gigabyte 10K SAS drives in. It gives me just under 10 terabytes of usable space. And unfortunately, when I bought this in transit, the uh, middle bit came out and got absolutely crushed. But um, yeah, that's fine. Um, I also had to clean up the screens and uh, a few other missed bits. But um, yeah, so right now that is our main backup array of 10 terabytes, but it's running out of space um, along with the main storage there that also has another dying hard drive that I need to replace. Um, and if you remember in the last video, we built this guy, uh, the Proline ML350P Generation 8. It's uh, still got the scratches and scuffs. I did clean all of this up, but um, some of it just won't come out. This currently has uh, a bunch of SSDs in it. It's, uh, I believe it's six, five Crucial MX500s and uh, one Samsung 870 EVO, I think. I don't know, I'll put it on screen if I remember. Um, but basically one of the crucial drives, we've had to RMA, I think, two or three of them now. Uh, one of them managed to lock the entire server up, completely crash it, and crash ILO as well. So I wasn't very pleased with them. And they've been having weird speed dropouts too. So uh, yeah, they're all going to get replaced with uh, Samsung drives. And then the MX500s, I'm probably going to put into another server and just have a uh, another redundant one. Still do have the uh, M4 up there, the old storage server with its uh, 16... 240 gig SSDs, um, but SSDs aren't really for backup storage. They've, we don't get the same space that you do on a uh, on spinning rust. So yeah, we're going to fill all of these up with something at some point, and uh, this server here is going to be the host for it. I'm not sure why the IMM is taking so long to load. Oh, I think it's actually done. Here we go. So I just need the uh, IP address of that when it says it's done. So we can actually check the firmware here. So as you can see, I've updated it to the 2021 firmware, if that's gonna focus. Uh, we have the alternate, so the backup bank in case something goes wrong. Um, the IMM one, 2020, that's actually got another one to uh, 5.7 that he's doing. Um, the backup IMM, that's fine. Uh, diagnostics, that's fine. I think that's what it gives us. Just going to the network info here so we can see the host name is now reset the uh, last people didn't reset it unfortunately and um, so i tried using the ibm asu tool which is essentially a tool that you can run that's supposed to let you uh control the imm like reset the password and things for it which is exactly what i wanted however on lenovo systems it doesn't work even though lenovo just basically stole ibm's kit but uh regardless i horrifically hit the reset button on it thinking okay if there's a license in here it's gone um, but it's come back up and it still has the advanced system upgrade license. So the last owner of this actually licensed it so I can use KVM and things like that, which is really, really nice. Um, and uh, see if it's got a, uh, an IP address there. It has, it's got 179. So uh, I can go and plug that into my computer and uh, get some firmware updates doing. And it's connected up to the domain controller and the router. So 
so it's reading all of that right lovely stuff and the other nice thing i spotted you can get the environment in here so it is 18 degrees in here at the minute it is three degrees outside um and the reason for that being so warm is i've had the big boys on the uh, older x3850 x5s and um, i made a video that i never released where i kind of rebuilt all of these rebalanced the rams they've each got 108 gigs of ram and um, reinstalled windows on there on this one here and uh went over how that one died <laughs> which uh ebay is the uh the reason for that um, and then i've started using it to build my own mini internet which sounds absolutely crazy i'll take 12. um but no it's uh it's going pretty well um it's mainly so that if i ever get an old laptop or something an old server something that uh i don't know let's take like that g3 there server if i install server 2003 on that it's not going to connect up to where you know it's not going to load up any modern websites because it needs a bunch of updates to even get close to it so the idea is that the mini internet can be accessed just by typing in a, uh, a specific address as your gateway that then goes through a bunch of routers virtual ones and that'll send you into a bunch of vms that these hold um, and i've built an entire search engine for it uh, a download site drivers software all that sort of stuff so i can just quickly go in grab the updates and bits i need and then uh, get the device up to date and put it onto the real internet um, or real network so that they can actually be used so yeah i don't know it's just a little project especially for older stuff that i'd uh, like old think pads or something it's nice just to be able to use them as they were intended back in the day but, uh, yeah let's uh, see what else we've got on here so we can see the cpu temperatures which is obviously nothing right now the uh, power supply voltages that's going to vary a little bit I believe it's supposed to be 240 around here, but because we're quite close to the transformer, it's only, a clock, like, only across the road in our little cul-de-sac. Um, it tends to be as high as 248 is uh, what the UPSs have reported. Um, and we can see right now it's drawing 15 watts, which is a little high to say it's doing literally nothing. But um, yeah, let's, let's fire it up and we can watch that number shoot up. Allegedly, this is where we're going to find out it's not going to turn on. No, nope, there you go. So that is now starting up. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't boot Windows. I have installed Windows on it, and um, it's got a very strange problem where uh, it appears that the RAID controller is starting up too slowly, which sounds ridiculous. But um, yeah, when it boots up, if you manually enter a UEFI path and add it to the boot manager, it won't boot it on the next reboot. But if you tell it to go to the boot manager, leave it for 30 seconds, then tell it to boot one time to a UEFI path, it will boot Windows fine. Same with the firmware USB. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what the issue is there with it, but uh, hopefully resetting the IMM will have now helped. So I'm going to jump over to my PC and get the rest of these firmware updates done. I just thought I'd let you know that I've uh, bought this and I am still around. And uh, they did have a really annoying sticker in. You can see the residue that it's left. I hate it when they do that. But, um, but yeah, lovely little system. And yeah, that is all, I guess. Goodbye.